Are you still hearing static? There is some static voice. I don't know why. Yeah, I have my window open. So I'm on the 18th floor. I don't know if it's uh, the noise from outside or what it is. I hear ru more, uh, rumbling from your microphone. Oh, it's from the microphone? It's not the microphone, but it's it sounds like it's street noise because of the window being open. No, the air conditioner. It's the air conditioner. Uh, no, there's no air conditioner. Hang on, let me listen. They have to suffer like the rest of us. Turn off the air conditioner, turn off everything. <laughs> Hang on. I'm not even a sound man. Hello, everyone. Hello. We will wait five more minutes for everybody to connect and then we will start. Good seeing you, Ira. Good seeing you, Roy. Where is Scarlett? She is right here. You think she'd miss a meeting? <laughs> Hello, Scarlett. Scarlett, hi. It costs more money to get her on camera, you know. I get paid nothing. She gets paid everything. I just had to do, we were doing a screen test for a Wes Anderson uh, movie, and uh, he has his normal cameraman. And so I was the advisor for Anamorphic uh, with the other cameraman. And so I had nothing to do. And so I went out in front of the cameras and was the, the stand-in for the test. And uh, the, the cameraman's a friend of mine, his name is Robert Yeoman. He was a friend of mine, he probably isn't anymore because I'm mad at it. Uh, because he had me dance, because it's a musical, he had me dance with Scarlett in front of the camera. And they're all having great fun with this. If this ever gets out, I'm done. But danced in front of the camera. Uh, is my microphone still doing that? I closed all the windows. Are you still getting a rumble from my microphone? A little bit, not much. Okay, so, um, well, I'll say my part and close uh, uh, close my microphone. Let you and David and Mara have it from there. Roy, I like your background. A lot of interesting things going on there. I like. It's, it's a picture of Nightmare on Elm Street uh, over there. Uh, me on uh, nightmare that's uh harry straddling that's uh all audio equipment with an old bolex eight millimeter projector is my asc where's your um, boards and my asc plaque and uh um uh, western i did the crew gave me that um like a camera over here there is uh behind me there's a sigma 12k right there and oh. uh nice Icon and uh, Sony A7R2 uh, and 4,000 movies back in around the corner. And that's just one of my piles. I mean, I've got, re regrettably for my wife, I've got piles all over the house of memories. <laughs> So 27 people so far. And David, David's not here yet, huh? No. Uh, so I guess, I think Mara's gonna open up. Yeah, I see David, he just signed on. I see him, he's the most recent. So 28, right, 28? Of course, perfectly lit as usual, David Mullen. Yes, exactly. Hello, right. David. We Hi. will start in two minutes. Uh, we said we will start at uh, five and five to get everybody a chance to connect. Yeah, I just uh, I just got an email from my director. You know, just a, like two minutes ago, I was answering it, and then I I suddenly realized the time. So, no. In fact, in fact, the director was asking me about some of my still photography work. So I was trying to explain 
I was doing all these blurred photographies where I was shooting long shutter speed and she was asking me how I did it. And, and I was explaining the process. And I looked at the client time and I said, oh, it's 502, I better get to the meeting. So. I think photography is just missing a lot. I mean, his, his still photography is exceptional. Uh, actually, you should be a member of the Royal Photographic Society, David, with me. It's a great organization, um, but uh, it's I've had a, a lot of practice being here in New York on my own. <laughs> a great city to practice in. Yeah, yeah. I've been uh, inspired by Ernest Ernst Haas. I have a book of his photographs, and he did a lot of long exposure street photography in New York. Um, where people were sort of sharp, but the traffic was blurred. And um, so on my van rides while I'm filming, uh, while people are passing the van, I'll just set the shutter speed to like a fourth of a second and I'll whip the camera as they go by and click, hoping I'm, I'm matching their position and frame. And then I'd look at the, and I take like 50 pictures and, and only a third are any good, but um, they're quite blurred, but if you're if you track perfectly enough, they're fairly sharp for a moment. So it's very abstracted and yet there's some detail that pops through, but it's all hit and miss. And then I find that in Lightroom, if I crank up the clarity and, and texture and sharpness, you suddenly get all these fine feathery streaming lines around people that it's like a brush stroke, you know, it's very, it's very interesting. Um, so it's been fun. Uh, Jeff Bridges' Wide Lux photography where he did, he, he would pan the camera for a very long exposure and put the person on the, uh, in the other side of the frame and there'd be a big streak between, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's fun. And I find that when the shot is that blurry, you could paint a corner of the frame red or blue or purple, it doesn't matter because people think it's a blurred purple object so you can sort of create sort of swaths of color that weren't quite there or, or exaggerate something that was passing by, you know, cause it's totally abstract, you know? So if some warm shopping bag went by the frame, you could make an orange streak out of it and things like that. So it's fun. Well, uh, we can start the meeting now. I believe everybody entered. Uh, hello and welcome to our Zoom conference. As you all know, my name is Mora, and in the next 50 minutes, I will be the host of this Zoom conference. As you all know, I am the organizer of the Winter Photo Contest 2021 from the Tropic to the Arctic, and the purpose of this contest was to encourage photographers, regardless of their experience and gear, to show us how winter looks through their lens. Uh, regardless where they are on the world. They can be near the desert, they can have amazing uh, pile of snow, regardless of their location. The purpose of the contest was to see how they use their creativity to take an amazing picture. Uh, the contest took uh, place on the forums on studentfilmmakers.com and it ended two weeks ago on the last official day of winter on uh, March 20. In the past two weeks, our judges, Roy H. Wagner, ASC, and M. David Mullen, AMC, have carefully analyzed your photos and they have chosen their favorite 10 entries to our contest. The best three photos will receive prizes offered by our official sponsors, Zeiss and Tiffan. Uh, before we proceed, I wish to invite the Student Filmmakers Magazine founder, Kim Walsh, to tell us a few words. Uh, well, um, I. You know, I thought I was going to talk for uh, Tiffin. Well, first of all, I want to thank Roy and I want to thank David very much. It's it's an honor to have such talented uh, cinematographers, uh, artists uh, judging our contest. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Uh, and then, um, you know, we have sponsors who sponsored the contest, and I was hoping that they would attend today. Uh, I don't know if they're here. Mark, should I go ahead and talk uh, just briefly for our sponsors? Uh, I don't see anybody from Zeiss here. Uh, I see somebody from Tiffin here. Oh, good. Okay. Um, then, um, then I'll I'll just speak. We publish a magazine. I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but we publish a magazine, and we have the online community, which I think everyone is now aware of. Uh, this is one of the most recent issues. I have one that's going to the printer now. Uh, if you guys are interested, you can sign up for it on our website. Uh, it's an excellent magazine we've published since uh, 2006, and I want to invite you to subscribe to that, either digitally or uh, in print. 
Um, and um, I, I'm not sure what else to say, except that uh, I know that we're planning uh, workshops with Roy, so you may want to keep your eye on the website. We may have some uh, online workshops uh, where we can do Zoom meetings and we'll have a minimal number of people and you'll be able to converse with Roy and talk about your projects, get ideas and insights on how to manage uh, some of the obstacles that you may be facing uh, in movie making. I know a lot of you guys are photographers. Uh, our sponsor Zeiss that sponsored this has been one of our long-standing sponsors. They started sponsoring us back in 2006 when Roy was doing his first workshops with us, the Digital Revolution workshops. And we put the Zeiss lenses up against the other lenses, Canon and many other lenses, and they are so much better. I mean, they're spectacular. The, the, you can see the difference when you swap a lens and, and look at it one after the other. And the Zeiss lenses are wonderful lenses and they uh, are high quality lenses. They're not made out of plastic like some of the lenses are out there. Uh, and um, I suggest that you take a look at their lenses. They have photography and cinematography lenses. And I think that's probably just about it for me, Mara. Okay. Thank, thank um, everyone who showed up, yep. Uh, Tiffon is one of the best American manufacturers of imaging accessories for professional imaging and motion pictures and television and bro broadcast industries. In the last eight years, they have constantly improved their products based on customer interaction and feedback. Uh, I saw we have somebody from Tiffon here with us today. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Ira Tiffon to address us a few words about Tiffon. Uh, if you are here, Ira. Hi there. Um, <laughs> Hello. Yeah, Hi. It, it's interesting. My last name is Tiffin, but I haven't been at Tiffin since 2004. Um, I'm actually here not representing the company. I have nothing to do with them at this point. Oh, but, okay. um, but I can certainly say a few words because I know a lot about them. They make great filters. Um, they've been doing that for a long time. And uh, they have an unusual ability to turn out products that have uh, lasted really well in this industry. Um, I did have something to do with that myself, but um, that's not why I'm here either. So since there apparently is no other representative of Tiffin, I would suggest that you strongly consider them in your choices of, uh, of where to get filters from. They have a wonderful range of, of products. Uh, Mara? Yes? Uh, so I just want to add that uh, some people are not very familiar with Tiffin and they think that they are filters, just filters, but uh, over the last, I guess it's 20 years, they've acquired and developed a number of companies and they now own Steadicam, uh, Lowell, Domkey, Davis and Stanford, uh, Stroboform and Zing. And uh, those are also quality products and things that you can check out on their website at Tiffin.com and I invite you to do so. Thank you. I also want to say I've learned more about filters from Ira than anyone else on this planet. Um, Ira designed uh, filters like the soft effects and the uh, black diffusion effects filters and any number of them. And he knows more about how a diffusion filter is designed from the ground up than anyone I've talked to. So uh, and he's written a chapter in the ASC manual about filters for us. I'd like to add that that it, you know a person can build the best product in the world, but if you can't reach them, if you can't talk to them, it's worthless. And what I love about Ira is he always accepts calls. He's always there and he'll always advise you if it's not about the products that he's involved with, he'll advise you about everything. And uh, that's been the experience. I mean, uh, uh, lights lenses are the Zeiss lenses are the same. I mean, uh, it's really important that you connect with people in the industry that you can call when you're uh, in jeopardy because the most lonely job in the world is a photographer because you're there by yourself, even if you've got a crew around you trying to interpret and survive in the midst of chaos and capturing that one moment that it's critical. And if you, you're having a problem, you need to have that pool of resources you can call. And as David said, Ira Tiffin has always been there. And uh, he is the the legendary final final or the last connection with with uh, mom and dad, uh, his, his mother and father, and, and uh, he's a remarkable resource for anything in the motion picture industry. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Ira. 
I had no idea you're not uh, here to represent Ethan, but thank you very much uh, for explaining. Uh, our contest is also sponsored by Zeiss. Uh, they sponsor the winner with a Zeiss Loxia 250, which is a flexible all-rounder lens that give you unparalleled creative freedom at your fingertips. And uh, in the following moments, our two judges, which are Roy H. Wagner and M. David Mullen, will decide the winner of our contest. As you all know, Roy was named top 100 directors of photography in the world by Kodak, and his career has spanned over 35 years in the motion picture and television industries. And he also won two Emmy Awards for Quantum Leap and Beauty and the Beast. He is also known as an honorary fellow of the Royal Photographic Society. And David is best known for his work on The Marvelous Miss Maisel, which has rewarded him with two Emmys. He also won the Dublin, Film, uh, the Dublin Film Critics Circles Award for Best Feature Cinematography in 2017 for The Love Witch. And in his career, he has photographed almost 40 independent feature films to several television series and pilots. Our judges have selected their favorite 10 pictures and they will explain why they liked about each of them and also uh, say about the winners. Why did they choose the winners? I will share my screen right now and uh, I will share with you each of the pictures they have selected. Just a second. We will start with honorably mentions with the finalists. Four. I'm sharing the screen right now. Just a second. Okay. Start. Mara, uh, yes. Uh, Roy has a question or a statement or something. Sure. Uh, judging photography is incredibly subjective. Uh, it, it, it's it's uh, hard for us when we get hired for a job to know why someone has chosen us over someone else. And I I assure you that that all of your work is extraordinarily good, and it's very very difficult for. David and I to try to, to determine who's is the best photography. And so it's very subjective on our parts. And uh, uh, I would hopefully try to encourage you to continue to pursue this extraordinary hobby and extraordinary profession because there, there's just no end to discovery. And yeah. a lot of times what you, what you photograph are the things that are happy accidents that you've come upon. Sometimes you are haunted by images that that uh, last with you and you have to go and find again. And they may only have lasted that for that one instant that you captured them. Uh, that's been my experience. Uh, there's, they're so ephemeral sometimes that the light's not the same or something else is not the same. So I applaud all of you for, for being vulnerable and putting your images out there. Yeah, I just want to say the same thing that uh, it's hard to judge uh, these photographs. They're all good. and. Um, I don't want people to feel like if we didn't pick theirs, there was something wrong with it or anything, or if there's something they thought was exceptional and we didn't pick that, um, that we must not know what we're doing or something. But it's really in our minds, a, just a sort of vague combination of looking for something a little fresh, a fresh take on something. Uh, you know, some of it is more technically advanced than others and others times it's, it's a subject matter. It's, we tried not to be, too specific about uh, any kind of rules about what a photo had to achieve. It was much more of a gut feeling of combinations. I didn't want to give too much weight to technical excellence over content, I did, but I did also didn't want to ignore technical qualities completely either. It was just, so it just ended being kind of what our hearts kind of felt were noteworthy, you know, what, what we responded to emotionally more than anything else. Uh, our first uh, honorably mention for the night is uh, this photo. You can, I hope everybody can see my screen. This is the picture. It was posted on our forums by uh, RNB Media. Uh, his name is Red Beasley. It seems that he made the photo using a Nikon camera and an 80 50, 50 millimeter lens. I will let you see the photo. I hope everybody can see my screen right now. 
Roy, you want to talk about this? Uh, no, this like, is on your top 10 list, I remember. Yeah, it, uh, it's a counterpoint I love. I mean, uh, technically, it's a, a vanishing uh, uh, plane that draws you right to the, the character. And uh, the fact that it's virtually a black and white shot, other than uh, the, uh, the, the person that's in the middle of the frame, and that's color. And it, it's so out of place and awkward that it's just gorgeous and beautiful. Uh, I was dramatically uh, taken by this image and was, was very impressed, not only with the, the fortitude of someone going out in the middle of that cold and capturing this image, but having the presence of mind to know exactly where to stand and, and, know, and knowing how, how to capture uh, the details in, in the trees to the vanishing plane and also capturing uh, the character. I, I think it's a beautiful photograph. It's something that could be hung on a wall and uh, uh, people would be struck, struck by the quality of the imagery. Uh, moving forward, uh, we have our second honorary mention for the night. It's again a photo that uh, was registered on our forums. The contest was on our forums. Uh, it was made by Valentin, and uh, this is the image he submitted to the contest. From what can I see, the photo was made using a Canon 6D, and he used the 50 millimeter lens. I love the simplicity and, and the, the fact that you captured enough detail uh, to separate the tree from the black uh, background, and also that your eye is drawn right to uh, the space of mystery, which is, you know, this is this is something that we would all try to create on a film set, uh, where your your eye is drawn to something that where you're in, in where the camera is in the darkness, and yet you're trying to be drawn to the light, but surrounding the light is darkness beyond. So if you get into that space. You have to think, if I go there, am I in more jeopardy than where I'm at right now? And that, you know, to me, every photograph tells a story. And what I love about this story is the counterpoints. Yeah, I, I also think it's it's interesting because it, it brings up questions that it doesn't answer. So it's one of these uh, photos that invites you to imagine the scenario, a scenario behind it that uh, you're, but you, you're not given any kind of clues as to what the story might be. Um, it's it's also the atmosphere of it is is great. A little bit of mist running through the shot, and the color contrast between the the warm street light orange and then the wider LED street light inside the tunnel. I also love that that you held the detail in the tree on the left. Uh, it's almost like a Steichen exposure, uh, 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 you know, with like the gum based photography or Frederick Evans. It's really. I'm impressed with the exposure as much as I'm impressed with everything else. Moving forward, our next honorably mention of the night is the photo submitted by Dark Indigo. He made it using a Canon Mark III and the Sigma Art 35 lens. This is his uh, image. I love happy accidents. I mean, you, you go out and, and you're in a place uh, where everything is there for you, but you have to find the right spot to to grab the image from. And this is so symmetrically perfect uh, that, and it doesn't give you any, it, it's sort of without hope because there's no warm light inside the house. There's obviously, or at least seemingly no one at home, but yet you're standing outside looking in. Uh, I, I love all the the symmetry of it. I love the color, color and the, the sense of space, uh, like the fog, and I just like the sense of place. I feel like I could have been there, and I could have, I would have hoped that I would have captured this image. Yeah, it's it again. It's a mystery um, that presented to the uh, the viewer, um, and it feels like you you've sort of walked in on this moment. You know, like you turned a corner on a road, and it's sitting there right ahead of you, uh, and it's. It's difficult to capture things like fog. You know, often it's doesn't it, it's accidental whether you get it that morning or not. 
Um, so it's, it's a very timeless feeling here. Moving forward, our next honorably mention uh, is the photo submitted by Alexander. Uh, this is the photo he took with a Canon and he also used the Canon 70 200 millimeter lens. This is the result. I love the power of this. I mean, it's again, a happy accident being in the right place at the right time. Um, it would have been easy to uh, underexpose this uh, with uh, holding, trying to hold the clouds, but you held enough detail in the shadows to, to, to separate the, the, uh, uh, the, the background from the foreground. And, and it's just, uh, again, it's just being in the right place at the right time with all the elements right there in front of you. Uh, I, I love this image. I also like the fact that it's portrait, you know, mostly, usually land, sunsets are shot landscape style widescreen and uh, to shoot it vertically and just emphasize the, the verticalness of the house and then the layers of clouds up into the darkness is, is an interesting uh, choice. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it has a nice strong graphic composition to it. You know, the house is almost perfectly in the right bottom third. Um, the color is, is sort of balanced equally orange in the first bottom half. So it, it's just a lot of elements that work graphically together. If, and if you'd shot it as a panoramic or a, 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 a wide shot, the house would have had no importance. Uh, the house becomes the subject. And the fact that, that the house is creating its own shadow, and that darkness draws you back up to the house. So everything, the mountains and the trees and the shadow of the house, is all drawing you to that. Whereas before you'd just be looking at a beautiful sunset and it would have been very easy to have stopped down three quarters of a stop to a stop in half and held more color in, in that sunset. And that would have been a mistake. You would have lost everything else. Moving forward, uh, one second. This is covering, I don't know why is it covering my <laughs> upper <laughs> side. Okay, uh, our next honorably mention is the photo submitted by Merle Roberts. Uh, the photo was taken using a Sony A7 and uh, the lens used were Zeiss Loxia 21 millimeters. This is the result. I just like uh, how, um, you know, it's almost like an infrared photograph, but it's just, it's just black and white with almost no gray in it and it feels, uh, almost like an ab piece of abstract art and yet it's very detailed uh, in other aspects with the reeds. Um, and it's just an unusual, um, you know, winter shot, I think, to, to just, it's not your typical composition. What I like about it is that once again, it's drawing you back to something that doesn't exist. Your eyes being forced back to uh, something that really um, doesn't exist. So you're constantly drawing being drawn into that photograph. And uh, uh, there's, there's nothing back there except for that read of land that uh, it doesn't really give you any kind of story. And it's just, a, I love the, it's obviously also because you can see the movement of, of snow or something across the water portion, which uh, kind of gives it a sense of movement as do the reeds or the grass on the right give you a sense of movement. So there's a lot of activity in that shot. Moving forward, our next uh, honorably mention is uh, the photo took by uh, Jacob. He took this photo with the Sony A7 III and the Sigma lens 24, 70 millimeters. And this is his result. Yeah, this is just a, you know, stunning uh, landscape photograph. Uh, the, the cyan, the mix of colors, you know, it's not just um, uh, bluish, but it's the reddishness of the rocks contrasting with the green, the cyan in the, in the water and the, uh, elsewhere. It's, it's got a nice range of color for, for a winter scene. Um, and it's just a really great location. I mean, this is where the, it's, you know, having hiked out to wherever the spot is and, and gotten this moment uh, 
it's just it's just very beautiful and and a slightly unusual subject matter with that that sort of cement bridge crossing the, the waterfall. But if you think about that picture without that tree stump in the middle, uh, in the foreground, that wouldn't ground, ground, uh, ground the picture as well. There's something about that tree stump that really makes that photograph more three-dimensional. And I also love that you, yeah. you did time exposure on the water, uh, which makes it feel like it's in motion um, there's lots of things that to, to love about this. I mean, finding a great location is one thing, but finding the, the counterpoints to an image to help tell your story is one, the other. And, you know, finding that blue in the water, uh, that's not necessarily that easy to do. It's, it's a matter of either post, uh, post dark room work or, or the proper exposure. Yeah, I, I think it's the, what I hits you quickly is the color range with the, uh, you know, again, sort of the teal and orange thing, but the the, the cyan reflections, but then that brown reddish uh, sand coming through the water like that uh, just adds an extra layer of depth to the image. Moving forward, we have our last honorably mention. It's uh, the photo made by. Uh... Ara Zinman. It's a uh, Bloomington Inn. Indiana. Indiana, yes. Uh, and the photo was made using a fine pix as a 3000 and the lens uh, 35 millimeters. And this is the result. I just think it's, you know, it's so many ways to shoot winter uh, scenes, but this, I've, rarely see this kind of ice storm effect photograph where it's just pure ice on a plant like this. And so it, the subject matter is just striking, I think. Um, and then shooting in backlight like this so that the, the ice is properly defined and, and uh, sparkles. And we just recently was in a, a ASC uh, masterclass uh, with um, uh, the ice storm DP, um, Fred Elms, and he was saying how uh, constantly on that shoot, uh, the, the director was saying more backlight, more backlight, because they were just trying to emphasize the ice storm uh, aspect. And it always, they covered everything in glycerin and they, they put lots of edge lights and everything. But this is sort of captures that, that unique quality when uh, ice just freezes on something. And here's an example where uh, a, a better lens might not have given you that, that mushrooming flare on, on the ice crystals uh, so you, by having the camera that you have, sometimes people are frustrated by that, but I'm looking at it and saying, well, if I'd had, uh, the best camera th that exists, I might not have gotten those mushrooming flares like, like you got on these images, which I think really add to it dramatically. Um, it, I, I love this photograph. And uh, moving on, we have the three winners of the night. We will start with the winner of the third prize. As you all know, the third prize, uh, the third prize of the winter photo contest is a Domke F5XB shoulder bag from Tiffin. Uh, you can see the bag on their website. This is our third prize. And our third prize winner is uh, Amps Studios NI. Mitchell Hartman, he took this photo with uh, a Leica and uh, 75 millimeter cam, and this is his result. I mean, this is where, you know, content is king for one thing, just to shoot in a storm and the, the horizontal nature of the, the snow blowing through is very dramatic, but also the graphic qualities, the way the black is framed against the white. It's very hard to do these sort of shots because to get clear shapes, you have to you know, be lucky or be very careful about framing when someone's just crossing, a dark shape is just crossing a light shape when you click the shutter. Um, I, I find this all the time at night when I'm doing night photography is that I, I'm waiting for someone's body just to pass a lit wall or a lit store window so I get their shape defined. So this is just great graphically, the diagonal of the staircase, the black shape, the umbrella, and then just the sheer power of the of the wind and the snow and, and how high contrast it is. I, I love the fact also it's it's not it's something of a time exposure because the the snow is blowing you see the blur in the snow and yet 
the man is very still. And uh, um, there's a great sense of proscenium here where, where, where the photographer is telling you a story and there's so many things to tell. I mean, the man's moving right to left, the snow is moving left, uh, uh, left to right. You have all the details you know, that have the stairs, climbing the next draw the back down to the man. Yet you have all these beautiful story points in the foreground with all the different things. It's just, uh, it, it's one of the things that's exceptional about New York is that there are just so many layers. Nobody's ever told them to tear anything down or to remove or to make it better. It's always just what it is. And it's what, why it's so much fun to photograph in a city like London or or New York or Paris, where there's there's the timelessness of of the space is so critically important. I actually thought this was your photograph, David, when I initially saw it, because of I, I wish I were that brave to go out on the weather that that's that it's that bad. Um, always after I broke my ankle last year, I'm a little afraid to slip on ice now. Um, well, I, I love how the, his, the crook of his leg matches the angle of the staircase. You know, there's like vertical, diagonal. Triangles, squares. It, I just I love the geometries in this. this also, photo. the umbrella is is uh, pointing you towards a staircase. It's not mm -hmm. completely open. I mean, you, again, he's making a choice, and uh, you as the as the viewer get to see the discovery of all these pieces. So it's a photograph that you can look at. Some photographs, you, there's only an instant of discovery. In this photograph, there's plenty of time for discovery. The winner to our second prize of the Winter Photo Contest uh, has won a Davis and Sanford Pro Vista uh, tripod from Tiffin. Uh, this is his prize on Tiffin's website, as you can see. This is the tripod. And uh, the winner to our tripod is Redeemed Photography. Uh, the photo was taken using a Nikon and an 85 millimeter lens, and this is the result. Another striking photograph. It's just astonishing, uh, the, the counterpoints of, of uh, the lady and, and that she's pregnant and, and in the midst of this, uh, this cold and a sort of unforgiving uh, location, yet there's so much serenity that she brings to it. And also the fact that the way her, her dress is, is drawing you up towards her. There's, just so, there's so much peace and serenity in this strikingly different image. Yeah, it's a great idea for a portrait. You know, uh, you don't expect a pregnancy to be shown in a red, striking red dress like this and against a snowy background. Is this all sorts of original sort of uh, elements put together? Um, that uh, it's it's just a great execution of an idea, I think. And it's a very you know lovely portrait. And uh, the winner of the night, the person that uh, won the first prize of the winter photo contest, uh, that person actually won three prizes in one prize. Uh, first of all, he will be featured in the next print magazine of student filmmakers. Uh, make sure to check your email. By the way, we will contact all of you, all of the people who won at the contest. We'll receive an email in the following days. Um, aside from this, the first prize is also a tripod from Tiffon. Uh, the Davis and Sanford Pro Vista 100 uh, two-stage aluminum tripod. This is the prize. As you can see, this is uh, the prize on Tiffon's website. And another prize is the Zeiss Lexia lens, 250 millimeters. Uh, this is the lens. And uh, the fortunate winner of all these prizes is Algi Photo uh, with this image. This is the winner of our winter photo contest. The image was taken in uh, New York City across the Central Park with an iPhone. It, it sort of shows you that it's, it's not the gear, you know, it's, it's, the, uh, it's the eye of the photographer. Um, it's just great, you know, composition here. The wide screen with the trees, and then having the same figure way at the bottom of frame. The very horizontal nature of it, the weather, the snow blowing through the frame, the figure with their arms out, uh, 
it, it just, you know, works on so many graphic levels, uh, the veins of the trees and the most, you know, everything. Everything draws you to that person, which is really difficult in the panoramic view. But it, it just, uh, the, that wall, if that wall weren't there, that person would not have the power that they have. And finding that opening, it's all about discovery and uh, the trees. You know, you get the atmospheric perspective where, uh, where the trees are very dark in the foreground and they diminish into softer and softer. So you get a great sense of space and uh, distance in, in this photograph. I just, it's fantastic. If you went back there and tried to do the same photograph in the summertime, it would not have any of the power that it has now, except in case the person was wearing a deeply saturated color and everything else was was uh, colorless. Yeah, it's uh, the um, it's funny with iPhones. I find it they're very good for certain subject matter that you know very textured subject matter like shiny metal pipes and a subway station, uh, bare trees. There's something about. Um, the uh, the tendency for it has to have less dynamic range and more over sharpening in the small sensor actually enhances certain textural objects more than a better camera does. So I find if I take a picture of like corroded metal, rusting metal on a sidewalk uh, or building, the iPhone actually sometimes does a better job of those sort of uh, things. So it's but it's you know they always say the best camera is the one you happen to have on you, and that's one of those things is. I think uh, it was Gary Winogrand or Jay Meisel said the number one rule of photography is to always have a camera with you because you can't take a picture without it. And in this case, we all have cameras on us these days. So there's no excuse not to, to stop and capture something. You know, you don't necessarily have to have your best camera with you. I'm just curious what she's going to do with the 50 mil Luxia, though, um, <laughs> if she's going to mount it to her iPhone or not. Probably she also has a camera or maybe it's the right moment for uh, the winner to buy a camera. Congratulations to all the winners to our contest. We will contact all of you by email and make sure to check your email uh, to uh, provide us all the details that we need to send you all the prizes. Uh, One of the things that what David said is critically important. It's... Uh, it's all about the happy accidents, the things that you don't think that you're going to see that suddenly appear before you and just having an eye and expressing it uh, to yourself and trying to explain it to someone else is unsatisfactory. That's why uh, we all carry cameras with us everywhere. And I know my wife is always saying, why do you have a camera with you? And it's, it's, uh, my whole life, I would not know what to do if I didn't have at least one camera, if not two cameras on me. And uh, it's, the joy of discovery is just amazing. And I, I celebrate all of you because this is one of the ways to, to communicate to each other and to, to the world what you're, you're feeling inside because each one of them is a personal experience. It, it took between five seconds to five hours to find that moment. I mean, I used to work with Ansel Adams and he would wait for two or three days to get the right exposure and, uh, uh, and the right time. And it's such a wonderful thing because it, photography allows you to do other things. Well, like David, uh, I'm living vicariously now through David and this New York uh, uh, journeys. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Marvelous Ms. Maisel will be beautiful as well, but uh, I, I love the still photography. And uh, it's just wonderful to see how someone sees such an incredible city as New York. But each one of you are living in a remarkably different place as we could see from the photographs. And the excitement is, for us who think we've seen everything, to be able to see how you interpret something we think we we envy that you found those moments. Yeah, it's it's a, photography is a way for all of us to come together and see in experiences that we can't be there for ourselves to to be there, but to to share it. And I get to see parts of the world and and people's lives through photography, and it's it's a very special gift, I think. Thank you all who have participated and supported our winter, our winter photo contest. Uh, On the Student Filmmakers Forum, we have a Q&A where Roy and David will be more than happy to answer if you have any questions. We will leave the Q&A open for a couple more days. So if you haven't had the opportunity, you can always post there uh, 
Bo, David, and Roy have an account on, stu on Student Filmmaker. Uh, Roy, David, what projects are you working on at the moment? Well, I'm working on, on advising uh, for a, a musical and uh, I'm preparing to do a feature uh, that was going to be in Atlanta, but I suspect won't be in Atlanta now. Uh, but it's a musical as well. For My mentor was photographed Easter Parade and My Fair Lady and Funny Girl and Hello Dolly. And I never shot any musicals in my entire career. And suddenly I'm shooting musicals. So it's kind of fun for me because uh, David, I envy David. He gets to shoot musicals all the time. But there's, there's something so much fun about a musical. Harry couldn't, my mentor couldn't uh, uh, whistle a tune, but he, would, he shot the best musicals of all time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, It's not easy shooting musicals. I, on the set, the arguments between, you know, the choreographer, the, the lighting board people, the stage techs about, no, the curtain has to come down on the fifth count, not the sixth count. And I'm like, I can't count above three musically. So I'm like, just, you know, Tell me if if it's the loud horn noise, that's when the cue is. But don't, don't tell me that after seven counts, something's going to happen because after three, I've lost count of something. So it's interesting to work with music, you know, musical people. I don't play an instrument or anything. So I envy those those people who have an ear for that. I just have an eye for color and light and, and things, but I don't have a, a, I can't dance, you know. <laughs> so that's interesting. I, I'm, I'm working on... Uh, middle of season four of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, so. Well, we are looking forward to see more from you guys. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to see the musical you are working on, Roy. There's a start for everything, you know how they say. Yes, I'm actually looking forward to seeing all of, all of your work. Uh, the photographers have participated. I, I, you, you're exciting to me. I mean, it's invigorating to see people's visions of, of places and you know, there's all so many times that now at my age, I, I, I trust my instincts, but there's so many times I'd walk by a place and say, oh, I'm not going to stop and take this picture. And I look back on it and think, why didn't I take that picture? And you're doing all of that. And I, I'm, I'm thrilled for the work that you're doing. And I hope that you continue because I would love to be a participant in that and seeing what you're, what you're discovering. And with this, we sum up our Zoom conference. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you to our sponsors, uh, Tiffon and Zeiss for offering the prizes to the winners. Uh, winners, make sure to check your email to provide us all the details that we need. And stay tuned for more because we will organize more events on our forums and uh, we will announce further workshops, uh, further contests and much more. I wish everyone to have a good day, good evening, regardless of your time zone. Uh, stay safe and stay awesome. Get, get some rest, David. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you.